Lead Code Problem 53 Maximum Subarray Hey everyone, this is Keystrokes. I'm a senior software engineer at one of the FANGs and I like to solve lead code problems and programming puzzles. And today we'll take a look at Lead Codes Problem 53, which is called Maximum Subarray and it's a medium difficulty problem. So let's take a look at the problem statement. We are given an integer array and our goal is to find a subarray with the largest sum and return its sum. For example, here we have this nums as the input array and the output is 6 and the explanation is that the subarray from 4 all the way to 1 which is right here, if we add all of these up, this has the largest sum of 6. In the next example, we have an array with one element, so the maximum sum we can have here is the single element which is 1. Then in the next example, we have another array and we can see adding up all the elements gives us the largest sum and so the answer is 23. So let's see everything you need to know to solve this problem. You need to know some basic programming concepts like loops. And as for data structures, you need to know how to operate on arrays. So let's start with a very naive brute force solution. And please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you have been liking my explanation so far. So let's jump into the brainstorming. Okay, so let's say we are given four minus one, two, and one as our input array. And if we have to do brute force, we basically need to evaluate every single subarray that's possible here. Now, for a subarray, we need to have a starting index and an ending index. So let's say we have one loop, which is represented by this arrow. And then we have another loop that's represented by this arrow. And the second loop is basically a nested loop inside the first one. So this first arrow is the beginning of the array. And the second arrow is the end of the array. So to start, we should initialize the first loop to the first element of the array. And the second loop should be initialized to the first element of the array as well. So our subarray basically becomes four. Now let's say we had another variable that tracks the sum of the subarray that we are working on. Let's call it sum. And by default, we can initialize it to the first element of the array, which is four. And similarly, we can have another variable called max, which tracks what's the max value we have seen of a subarray so far. So by default, we can assign max as the first element of the array as well. So that becomes four. Now our first subarray becomes four, which is a single element array, and our sum remains the same. And our max does not change either. Now we can move the second loop to the next element in the array, which will be pointing to minus one then. Now our subarray becomes four and minus one. And all you have to do is simply add minus one to the sum. So we add a minus one to it, and then it becomes four minus one, three. Now max is larger than three, so we don't make any updates. Now we keep moving forward. Now for the second loop, we point it to the next element, which is two. So our subarray now becomes four minus one and two, and we add two to our current sum. So if we do plus two, this now becomes five. Now five is actually larger than the max we had seen so far. So we update our max to be five. Now again, moving forward, our loop two moves to the next element, which is one. So our subarray becomes four minus one, two and one, which is basically everything. Now we do plus one to the sum and we get six. So now our max should be updated as well and should be made six. And now that loop two has reached the end of the array, it's time to increment loop one to the next element. So now loop one points to minus one instead of four. And then we can reset loop two to actually point to whatever loop one is pointing at. So which becomes minus one. So now our subarray basically becomes minus one. Now, when we do this reset, we should also reset our sum to be back to be zero. So we make our sum as zero. Now, the first thing we do is add minus one to it. So this becomes minus one and max is clearly larger than minus one. So we don't do anything. And then we move loop two to the next element, which is at two. So we do plus two to our sum and we get one as the final sum. So our max is not updated again. So we move loop two to the next element. We do plus one, and then this becomes two, which is again smaller than max. So we don't update anything. So if you notice, basically we're choosing the start of the array and then we're just expanding it further using loop two. And if we keep doing that, we get all of the possible subarrays which can be formed in this array. And that gives us the brute force algorithm. In this case, if we continued our loop, we had minus one, Next, we would have minus one and two, and then we would have minus one, two, and one. And then our loop one will be updated to point to two, and loop two will be updated to point to loop one, which is at two right now. So this points to two. So our next subarray becomes two, and then we move this loop two to the next element, which is at one. Then we get two comma one as the next subarray. And then we move loop one to the last element, and we update loop two to point to loop one as well. And then one becomes our last subarray. So in the end, 
we get all the possible subarrays from the given array and we keep track of the sum as well as the max sum that we have seen so far. Here's how the code looks like for the brute force solution. We have nums as the input integer array and we start by assuming the max sum is the first element from the array. Then we start a loop from zero until the end of the array and then we initialize another variable sum so far which we initialize to zero. This is what creeps the track of sum that we have evaluated so far. Now we run another loop which starts from loop one and goes all the way to the end. And now here all we do is add the value pointed by loop two to sum so far and check if that's the maximum we have seen so far. And in the end, we just return the maximum we have found. Okay, so now let's jump into our IDE and code this brute force solution. Okay, so here I have IntelliJ and I have a solution class here with the same method that we have on lead code, which we can see right here. We also have a main class where I have some base cases defined and it calls the method in the solution with those base cases. So let's first create a variable called max sum and we can initialize it to the first element of the array. Okay, so now let's run a loop because there'll be two loops. I'll be calling this as loop one and we'll start it from zero and we'll run this loop all the way to num start length and then we'll increment this by one. Okay. So in here, let's create another variable called sum so far. And this just tracks what the sum is so far as the name implies. So let's copy this loop again and let's create a loop two here. So loop two, loop two and loop two. Now in here, we'll update sum so far and we'll add the element being pointed by loop two. So this becomes nums loop two and we just add it into sum so far. And then we simply check if max sum needs to be updated by doing math.max and taking the max of maxim or sum so far. And I think I messed up the plus equal to here. This should be plus equal to. Okay. And in the end of the program, we just return the maxim that we have evaluated. So basically, let's say if you have an array as one, two, three, and four, then loop one points to the start of the subarray and loop two points to the end of the subarray. In the beginning, they both point to the same element and sum so far is just the element itself. So which will be one in this case. When loop two moves to the next element, sum so far adds two as well to it. So this becomes two plus one, three. And then when it moves further, we add three to this three. So it becomes six. And similarly, when it goes to four, we add four to the six and it becomes 10. So at every step, sum so far keeps track of the total sum of the subarray represented by loop one and loop two. Okay, so now let's run this program for the base cases we have defined and they were all correct answer except for the first one. And I realized that's the case because loop two needs to start from loop one and not from zero. So let's run this again. And yes, the first input works as well now. So let's copy this and go on to lead code and try to submit this for the base cases first. So running this and that was accepted. So now let's submit this for all of the test cases. And as we expect, this should give us time limit exceeded exception because brute force really doesn't work so well. But I think there's a better solution that we can come up with. So let's see what a good optimal solution could be. Let's jump into brainstorming. So let's see what we can do to make this more optimal. So if we look at the problem, we want to find a subarray which will give us the maximum sum. So as we move through the array, we can keep track of the sum we have seen so far. So when we start from four, and we keep adding things. So here we'll have four as the sum. Then if you move forward, this becomes four minus one, which becomes three. If you go further forward, this becomes three plus two, five. And if we go even forward, this becomes six. So in this case, six is clearly the maximum sum we can have, which we get by using the whole array and not creating a subarray out of it. But let's say this was minus 11. Then how will things look like? So we start from here. We have four as the sum we have seen so far. Then we go forward. This becomes minus 11 plus four, which is minus seven. And then if you go forward, this basically becomes minus five as we add two to it. But won't it be better to just discard everything we have seen so far and start a new subarray from this element because that will give us two as our running sum. And then if you go further, two plus one then becomes three. So basically the idea is to keep summing these numbers as long as it's greater than zero. And the moment it hits negative, that is less than zero, that's when we can reset our sum to be zero again. So we can make sum as zero and restart our sum. So let's try to use a longer array 
and try to implement that strategy. Let's declare a variable called max, which tracks what's the maximum sum we have seen so far. And let's assign it to the first element of the array, which is minus two in this case, just so that we have a starting point. Let's also create another variable called sum, which tracks what our running sum is so far for the subarray. And we can assign it as zero. Now, as we iterate on the first element, let's add minus two to the sum, which makes it minus two. Now, max sum does not need to be updated because it's the same as the sum, so we can move on. So now, because this sum is already negative, there is no point in adding any more numbers to it because if we get another negative number, that will just make this minus two smaller. So let's say if this one here was a negative one, then on the next step, this will become minus two, minus one, which becomes minus three. So there's no point in going towards a smaller value. And even if this was one, adding one to this minus two will give us minus one, which is definitely smaller than just using one as it is. So because our sum is negative, we can just discard this part of the array and reset our sum back to zero. So we don't need any of this. Now, when we go to the next element, we see it's one. So we add it to our sum and this becomes one. And clearly this is the maximum value we have seen so far. So we update our max to be one. Now we move on to the next element, which is minus three. So we add it to our sum. So one minus three gives us minus two. Now minus two is clearly smaller than the max we have seen so far. So we don't update our max. Now because sum is negative, there's no point in continuing to add more numbers to it. So we again reset it back to zero and discard all of this. And the subarray that we had going is not needed anymore. Next, we come to four and we add four to our sum. So our sum becomes four and four is clearly the max we have seen so far. So we update our max to be four. Now we move on to the next element, which is minus one. So we add minus one to four, which gives us three, which is smaller than the max. So we do not update our max and our sum is still greater than zero. So we don't do anything to it. So we move on to the next number now, which is two. We add two to this, which gives us five and our max needs to be updated because five is larger than four. So our latest max becomes five. Now again, five is not negative. So we keep moving forward. Now we go to the next element, which is one. We add one to it and this becomes six. Now six is again the max value we have seen so far. So our max becomes updated to six and sum is still greater than zero. So we keep moving strong. Next is minus five in our array. So we add minus five to it and we get one as the running sum. Now one is smaller than six, which is our current max. So we don't do anything. Now, if you move to our next element, which is four, we add four to our running sum, which then becomes five, which is smaller than the max we have seen so far. So we do not update anything. And then we have run out of all the elements and six becomes our max we have seen so far. So there's a subarray in this given array with a maximum sum of six. To summarize, the idea is to keep adding elements one by one. And until that sum becomes negative, we keep adding it because it's in our best interest to keep that positive sum that we have going. But the moment it hits negative, there's no point in considering that subarray anymore. And it's better to restart our subarray. And as we do this process, we just keep track of the max we have seen so far. And that's how we can figure out what's the subarray with the maximum sum. Okay, so here we have the pseudocode for the optimal solution we just discussed. Here we have nums as the input integer array, and then we assume maxim is the first element of the array. And we also initialize another variable as current sum, and we initialize it to zero. Now we run a loop from zero all the way to the end of the array, and then we add the current value pointed by the loop to current sum. And then we update our maxim in case the current sum is larger than the current maxim we knew. Now, if the current sum is smaller than zero, that means it's negative, then it makes sense to reset current sum to zero because on the next iteration, we add the next element to current sum, which then basically resets if our current sum has been becoming negative. And that's primarily because we want larger sum and having a negative sum doesn't help at all. Well, after this loop ends, we have evaluated our maxim and we just return it from our function. Okay, so let's see how we can code this out. But before that, if you have been liking the explanation so far, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And also, if you like my explanation in general and would like to have one-on-ones with me, please find the link to the form in the description. I can help you with interview prep or you're just starting to learn to code. Or if you need help with any computer science topics, including any consulting on project ideas and how to execute them. And please feel free to use the form for any topic that you'd like to discuss with me. Okay, so let's jump into our IDE and code this out. Okay, so now let's see how we can implement our optimal solution. So we'll keep maxim as the first element of nums. And here we'll introduce another variable called current sum. And we'll initialize this to zero. 
Now let's run a for loop. We can run the for loop in this way where num will store the element in the array nums for every iteration. And I don't think we need any of this here. Now here we can add the current num to the current sum. So we can do current sum plus equal to num. And then we can update our maxim to be the max of maxim or current sum in case that's our new max. Now, if current sum is negative, then on the next loop, num can either be a positive number like three, or it can be a negative number like minus three. Now, if it's a positive number, then adding num to current sum will give us minus five plus three, which will be minus two, which doesn't help us because we know if we ignored minus five and reset current sum to three, then that would be much larger than minus two. Similarly, if num was minus three, then the sum would become minus five minus three, which will give us minus eight. Now, even in this case, minus three itself would have been much larger than minus eight. So this gives us the condition if current sum is smaller than zero, then we should reset current sum back to zero so that it can restart adding the numbers. And that should be it. Towards the end, we return max sum. And let's see if this passes our base cases. And yes, our base cases were successful. So let's copy this and go back to lead code and put the program right here. And let's run it for the base cases again. And they were all successful. So now let's try to submit this for the actual test cases. And hopefully this time we won't get time limit exceeded. And instead we beat 100% of all the submitted solutions. Well, that's all I had for this video today. Now you know how to solve maximum subarray lead code problem. And if this video helped you, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and to follow me on Twitter and feel free to buy me a coffee as that's our fuel to keep coding. I'm working on the next video and that should be coming out soon. Until then, check out this lead code problem. You might have fun solving it. We'll keep solving more and more problems. So I'll see you next time.